Here's your wrestling news for April 9th, 2022. And your headlines for today include former Royal Rumble winner Shinsuke Nakamura confronts Roman Reigns as unexpected first challenger post WrestleMania 38. Roman Reigns to appear on both Raw and SmackDown for now. Tony Khan claims AEW haters are paid trolls and bots, makes it clear he commissioned independent studies to prove it. Fans drag Tony Khan for claiming AEW haters are paid trolls and bots. Joey Janela, Becky Lynch, Braun Strowman, and others respond. The Ronda Rousey Charlotte Flair feud continues. Cody Rhodes set to wrestle first match on WWE Raw in six years. Several SmackDown stars booked for WWE Raw next week. Curtis Axel and Aria Davari possibly returning to work for WWE, and more. We are kicking off today with SmackDown, which saw an appearance from the undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns, fulfilling his promise made on this week's Raw. Speaking about the future plans for the Bloodline, Reigns spoke about the Usos possibly unifying the SmackDown tag titles with their Raw counterparts, currently held by RK Bro, but the Tribal Chief was interrupted by an unlikely name. During the segment, Shinsuke Nakamura appeared to confront Reigns and looks to be first in line to get a title shot against the undisputed WWE Universal Champion. A title match likely to take place at WrestleMania Backlash, this likely wouldn't have happened for Nakamura had his tag partner Rick Boogs not got injured, but the King of Strong Style looks to be the one to take the bloodline down. After dispatching of Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, Reigns is unquestionably the top name in WWE today, and that's something both Fox and the USA Network recognize. According to Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Reigns is expected to appear on both Raw and SmackDown moving forward until a new world championship is created for either brand. Meltzer also noted that with Reigns and Lesnar having dispatched of much of the competition, there's very few viable candidates to challenge the Tribal Chief, which could mean his reign doesn't end anytime soon. It's even been noted by Bet Online that Reigns is the favorite to end 2022 as a world champion in WWE, and until a title change happens or some new gold is introduced, expect to see plenty more of the head of the table. Over to AEW next as Tony Khan has done a lot in a few years, but the company does have its share of critics. Like any promotion, AEW is open to fans who may prefer a different style of wrestling, but according to the man himself, there's no legitimate reasons for hating AEW. On Twitter, the AEW president claimed that an independent study conducted has shown that those online who bash AEW are mostly paid trolls and bots, as opposed to real individuals. Con questions who would pay for such a wildly expensive thing, insinuating that only WWE has the revenue to target their rival promotion in this way. Khan didn't provide any specific data for this alleged study, nor did he give fans information on how this information was collected or by who. Fans were quick to question the bold claim without any evidence, and if this study even happened, many fans say that Khan paid for it, making it far from independent. In response, Khan said that he isn't using his company or his influence to skew the results, and that he hired an independent person to review the independent study. Similar with the study, Khan didn't reveal the identity of this independent individual, but joked that he'd have to dock Brian Alvarez's pay by $200,000, implying that the Wrestling Observer Radio presenter works for him. Clarifying his comments in a statement to Wrestling Inc., Khan said that accounts are making posts and then using bots to manipulate the social channel algorithm to make them seem more popular, which makes social media feature this post for longer. Khan gave an example of how this works, saying if he uses 18 bots to boost a claim that a person eats rotten bananas, then anyone who looks up that person's name will see this fake post. Unsurprisingly, wrestling fans didn't appreciate being told that their opinions are either the result of bots or that they're being paid to have that opinion, and many said that this only proves that the AEW president cannot take criticism. Others bashed Khan for taking yet another shot at WWE rather than focusing on his own product, as despite what TK has said in the past, WWE has clearly gotten in his head. Time will tell whether Khan reveals any actual proof of his claims, but for now, the AEW president is sticking to his story, and if you don't like what he's doing, he's probably called you a paid troll or a bot. It's not just the fans who have reacted to Khan's comments, as many from the wrestling industry have weighed in on his claim about bots. 
Parodying Vince McMahon's reveal as the higher power in 1999, Joey Janela said he is the one responsible for these alleged bots, while Becky Lynch quoted Khan's tweets but said that bots and paid trolls were sharing anti-Becky sentiment online. Evil Uno of the Dark Order also used the same tweet to address his critics, but in a follow-up tweet also promotes support for the LGBTQ community. Adam Schur also promoted his Control Your Narrative promotion with the same tweet, as Khan's claim has quickly become a meme in the wrestling industry. Khan may have wanted to prove a point, but it seems to have backfired on him, though we're sure he'll disregard this negative feedback with the same claims he's already made. More from SmackDown as Ronda Rousey opened the show to declare that she wants a rematch with SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair following her controversial loss at WrestleMania. WWE tried to do some damage control to make Rousey seem more likable, a tall order considering she got put immediately into the title picture after over two years away, but to WWE's credit, it worked with last night's crowd. Although it isn't official yet, the two will seemingly clash in a rematch at WrestleMania Backlash, and WWE have sowed the seeds for an I Quit stipulation. This gives Rousey a prime opportunity to dethrone Flair, who has been champion for eight months if you include her run as Raw Women's Champion, which ended in October with a title swap with Becky Lynch. Rousey will likely win the title, though fans have been disappointed that there's still no sign of Bayley, and we'll just have to wait and see what the role model does when she's eventually back in the ring. Over to Raw now, where Cody Rhodes will be competing for the foreseeable future, and he'll have his first match back on the red brand next week. It's been announced that in his first match on the show in six years, Rhodes will face The Miz on this coming show following his return at WrestleMania. Rhodes did wrestle last Monday, but that was in a dark match win over Kevin Owens, and next week will be his first televised singles match on Raw since facing Apollo Crews on the April 25th, 2016 show. Rhodes has also been booked for a rematch with Seth Rollins, but fans will have to wait until the May 6th edition of SmackDown in Uniondale, New York. Next week's Raw will also see the in-ring debut of Veer Mahan, who will face Rey Mysterio in singles action, as there will be plenty to tune in for on the road to WrestleMania Backlash. It's not just matches that have been announced for next week's Raw, but the show will also have an injection of blue brand superstars. That's according to a new report from PW Insider, who says that at least three to four SmackDown stars are expected to appear during next week's three-hour show in Detroit, Michigan. While the current belief is that these individuals will be there to work dark matches, a strategy WWE is using to help with ticket sales, it's also possible that someone from SmackDown will appear on the broadcast. In addition to the names we mentioned earlier, Raw will also see AJ Styles face Damian Priest, and Sasha Banks and Naomi face Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan, but only time will tell if any SmackDown superstars appear during the broadcast. For the past two years, WWE has cut dozens of superstars and hundreds of employees in the name of cutting their budget. Many ex-superstars have since found work elsewhere, with several former names coming to AEW, but now, two released stars may be heading back to WWE. Fightful Select notes that Joe Hennig, who worked with WWE as Michael McGillicuddy and Curtis Axel, has had a tryout role as a WWE producer and worked last night's SmackDown. Henning worked with Tyson Kidd to produce the women's match which saw Liv Morgan defeat Sasha Banks, but there's no word on his performance. Arya Davari, who was released in June 2021, also worked as a producer last night and worked with Chris Park, aka Abyss in TNA, to produce Drew McIntyre's countout victory over Sami Zayn. Davari's brother Sean Davari is currently working as a WWE producer, and in his time away from WWE, Arya has been busy working for AEW, New Japan, and the NWA. Like Axel, there's no word on how his audition for the role went, but with WWE reportedly short-staffed when it comes to producers, these two may soon be back with WWE, albeit in much different roles out of the ring. And we're ending today with even more from SmackDown as the show saw a few debuts across its two hours. On the show, Butch made his in-ring debut on SmackDown in a loss to Xavier Woods, while two-thirds of Imperium were called up. Gunther, formerly Walter, made his SmackDown debut, as did Marcel Bartel, who is now working as Ludwig Kaiser on the Blue brand. Raquel Gonzalez also appeared, albeit via backstage promo, and is now going by Raquel Rodriguez, though this name change isn't nearly as bad as the likes of Butch, Gunther, and Kaiser. These name changes seem unreasonably bad, and while we know WWE changes the name to trademark them, these new monikers sound more and more ridiculous by the day.
Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.